Um, I had a group of about 20 people. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'll just follow me through now, please. We came into the repeater station. I brought the group up to the barrier. Bring the headquarters came through a narrow well shaft. 150 feet below this room. You have to notice the a lady, she was very intent. And she suddenly looked very alarmed and she fell down and slipped down onto her knee. Connecting the outside I'm okay, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. But the lady wasn't really fine, as Leslie found out at the end of the tour. Thanks very much. Glad you enjoyed the tour. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. Thanks for coming. Are you okay now? You didn't hurt yourself in there, did you? No, I'm fine. But, well, this is going to sound very strange, but I think I ought to tell you what happened down there. Find that on the level above. She explained that she'd been watching a man. She had a uniform on, a naval uniform, down at the far end of the repeater station. And she thought he belonged here, part of the tour, tinkering with the equipment. It was essential that this equipment work. She then she got alarmed because he started to walk towards the group. He was walking quite fast. He came down the second small flight of steps, and he just walked straight through the barrier and right through her. This sighting is only one of many in a complex which spans three eras the Hellfire Corner Tunnels, the old gun rooms built to fight off Napoleon's threatened invasion, and the ancient castle where William the Conqueror once stayed. All have reports of inexplicable goings on. Well, I've lost count of the number of times that visitors and my staff have told me of strange noises and mysterious figures they've seen. Two Americans that were visiting the underground works, and after they left, they mentioned to the guides of the appropriate sound effects that we had down there but they, there were no sound effects in the underground works could these be the sounds the american couple heard sounds of the second world war when hellfire corner was the communications center monitoring the threat of enemy attack in the channel bomb proof and impregnable the evacuation of dunkirk was planned here hundreds of people lived and worked inside the cliff face The tunnels were sealed for half a century before being opened up as a museum. Even now, visitors are allowed round only with supervision. Some would say, for good reason. I had a tour group of about 25 to 30 people, and the tour had been going well until we reached the repeater station. I noticed a father and daughter standing slightly away from the rest of the group. 150 feet below this room, connecting with the main distribution frame behind the desks. The girl appeared to be in communication with somebody who appeared invisible to me, and her father was looking on interestedly. Because of the and then all of a sudden the father disappeared out of the repeater station. This equipment worked at all times. At the very rear of the tunnel... Is the Can you stay with the rest of the group, please? Yes, of course. Sorry. Karen tried to forget the incident and carried on with her tour. Just before we move into the next room, ladies and gentlemen, a piece of light-hearted information for you. This room is supposed to be the most haunted room in Hellfire Corner. <laughs> yes, I know, and I've just seen the ghost. Uh, at that point, I thought we got a bit of a one here and dismissed what he said. OK, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to follow me. He was very casual about the whole thing, but the girl was very withdrawn and shaken. She looked in shock, in fact. Karen realised something very unusual had happened, so she took down the details. He said his name was Bill Billings, and he said he was killed when he was assembling uh, an amplifier rack or something. I thought that they had definitely seen someone down here. Despite such testimonies, some of the castle staff are quite sure that the reason for it all is a perfectly natural one. After eight years of taking groups around the castle, Philip Wyburn Brown thinks he knows what's behind the apparently abnormal activities. 
The building is 800 years old. It's built high on the cliff. It is subject to a lot of uh, wind and air currents up here. So I think a lot of it is very much the, the natural phenomena of the building itself. So could it all just be a combination of natural atmospherics and overactive imaginations? Local investigators have done a scientific stakeout of the castle and its many tunnels and passages on three all-night vigils. Everybody happy with the groups? Yep. We brought a team of 16 people into Dover Castle, divided the team into pairs, working to a very strict shift rotor. We brought in very sophisticated equipment such as a high-tech computerised sensing machine which senses uh, changes in temperature, uh, movement. Everybody's equipped with tape recorders, thermometers, video cameras. Each pair were given a certain location to work on. Group H, Sue Nichols and Keith Akers, were stationed in a passageway with their tape recorder. We'd been sat there about five hours when suddenly there was uh, an ominous bang. Unable to believe their ears, they played back the tape. And we knew there was no doors anywhere around. There was, uh, there was nobody else near us. And then, the investigators say, they didn't just hear what they claimed to be poltergeist activity, they saw it. At approximately two o'clock in the morning, my partner and myself had a loud bang in this room, and we investigated this door here, um, found it was to be locked, and moved away approximately 10 feet. There was this huge bang behind us, which made us both jump out of our skins. We turned around, quite petrified, to see the door still vibrating madly. The next time it happened, the investigators were determined to get proof. Chris Cherry, a master at the University of Kent, trained a video camera on the door. The noise was quite tremendous, and all those tapestries above our heads started swaying. Um, and this was rather extraordinary. We thought we got a paranormal phenomenon, and I very stupidly yelled out, we've got it, and of course that screwed the whole thing up and it, it ceased. Each team who were working in the keep thoroughly checked the area out and we could find no apparent natural reason for the door to run at all.